and health officials issue a warning to parents when it comes to spotting those symptoms. Uh, well, let's talk to bacteriologist Professor Hugh Pennington from the University of Aberdeen. Really good to see you this morning. First and foremost, should we be concerned? Well, not, not in general. Um, th this is a rare infection. Unfortunately, you know, these, these, these poor kids have been carried off by it. And it's a higher number than we would like. In fact, we'd like to see zero. But the numbers are still very small. And what's happened is that the, the bug, the uh, streptococcus, had a really uh, hard time during the uh, lockdowns. You know, it was suppressed. But he didn't have a, a good chance of spreading from person to person because we were washing our hands, we were wearing masks, we were socially distancing, not meeting up and all that kind of thing. And once all those things have gone away, the, the bug is getting back to normal, as it were. And we're getting back to a situation that occurred before the pandemic. Now, every year there were fatalities, very, very few, very, very few. I want to emphasize that, that most cases of infection with this bug are very mild. Um, some, the child gets the classical symptoms of, of scarlet fever, where you get a skin rash and feel pretty sick and perhaps have vomiting and diarrhea and uh, you know headaches and all that kind of thing. Most of those get better and would get better even if they weren't treated. But, but the good news is that uh, treatment is straightforward with uh, penicillin. Uh, this is not a bug that's developed antibiotic resistance like so many other bacteria. It's still sensitive to penicillin. The, the whole issue really is can you get the penicillin in there quickly enough? And if you can, the, the disease um, is, is coped with extremely well. And that's why, we, that's why it's, it's so rare. Ever since antibiotics came in, the number of cases of scarlet fever has declined absolutely massively. But it hasn't gone away. It hasn't gone away. Because not everybody gets the antibiotics. And that's one of the big issues, is making the diagnosis, because many of the symptoms are not specific to this particular infection. They, you know, like a sore throat is usually caused by a virus. And, you know, you don't give antibiotics for a virus because the viruses pay no attention to antibiotics. But on the other hand, um, a significant minority of them are caused by the strep. So it's a question of making the diagnosis, making the diagnosis early enough Getting to see a GP, if you have any very worries about your kid, that they're really quite ill, and, and, and they've got this sort of range of symptoms uh, that I've just described, uh, skin rash, uh, feeling really sick, high fever, headache, all that kind of thing, take medical advice, and, and, and uh, basically then it's up to the doctor to make the clinical diagnosis and um, put in the antibiotics keep saying it's very, very rare, and I think we all understand that it is, but suddenly we're seeing these headlines that six children have died from it, uh, and people will panic. Obviously, they will. Um, what should they do? I mean, the little girl who's uh, very ill in hospital at the moment uh, was taken to hospital first, firstly, and doctors said, we don't think it's anything very serious, and was sent home uh, initially. What, what should parents learn from this? What should they do? Well, I think they have to have a high index of suspicion at the moment because clearly this bug has, uh, I mean, the half a dozen cases is, is not large by any standards. And by the standards of, you know, 20, 30 years ago, it's trivial, but it's not trivial now. We have an expectation that a treatable disease, which is, this is, by standards, straightforward antibiotics, uh, should be prevented, should be cured. And clearly, the onus is on the parents to take medical advice because you can't get penicillin over the counter. You have to have a prescription. And then for doctors to have a higher index of suspicion than they would otherwise. And one of the problems is that because the disease, this severe manifestation of the disease is so relatively rare, many doctors won't have seen a case. And they may not have that um, high index of suspicion. They will now, after you know, after reading the newspapers this morning and all that kind of thing. They will now, and um, but up until now, perhaps there has been that kind of. It, well, it, it, it's not medical negligence. It's just basically 
people just don't have a memory of it. You know, doctors don't have a memory of it. Um, you know, unlike people of my generation, they don't have a memory of it. Uh, they've never seen a case, and clearly they have to make this difficult diagnosis, where, as I was saying, many of the symptoms are not specific to this uh, pr problem. Um, so you have to put them into, into your sort of, um, in, into a box and say, yes, it could be, let's give penicillin, and if we do, that is going to knock the bug on the head, as it were. So it's quite a difficult diagnostic conundrum for, for, uh, for doctors to deal with. I, I, I'm very confident that the parents, you know, having read about these tragedies, will be making their case to the doctors, is it, is it a, 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 you know, group A strep infection? Uh, does my child have scarlet fever and with all the potential of uh, a very, very serious infection, which is a very low potential. Scarlet fever, you know, we have thousands of cases every year, and we were having quite a few cases during the pandemic, but the number of cases has now gone up, and these tragedies are a manifestation of that. Okay. Uh, Professor Hugh Pennings, really good to see you this morning. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Isn't it astonishing that some of these very old-fashioned 